Uh, in the Wiseant chat, did I just send you the word test? Um, I sent it I to James U just now, just to uh, make sure that I'm talking to the right person in Wiseant chat. English. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Cool. So, uh, how's your college been? <laughs> how's your school been? Or are, is this for school, or are you at a company doing stuff? Um, I'm s still in school. Um, cool. But I, I'm pretty sure I sh uh, should be finishing soon. I oh, am. Yeah. Cool. I was a bit nervous when I graduated. Like, oh crap, what do mm -hmm. I do now? <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of on the same page. Yeah. Too. Yeah. What is the assignment about? Um, it's about uh, grips and running C programs from like bash command. Gotcha. Um, I said like main. I see it. Instruction for the. the uh, I see the a doc X. Let me move that to the right place. Where did it go? Downloads. Okay. Uh. Downloads. CS two thirty. Actually, I want to move it. OK. Um, and then, hmm. I guess I'll open it using the f normal file browser. That'll take a second. Um, tutoring J. Oh, 
that's weird. Um, I'm in the wrong place. Okay. Are you able to see uh, my screen? Uh, yeah. Oh, does it show up tiny on Wiseant? It probably does, doesn't it? Are you able to make me full screen on Wiseant? Yeah, yeah. You can? Okay, cool. Okay. Um, CS230, first script and how to run C programs from the bash command window. Uh, that's not quite how, what I would call that. Um, they maybe mean a terminal window from bash within a terminal, but, uh, sure, let's go with bash command window. Shell scripts are short programs that are written in the shell, in a shell scripting language, programming language, uh, and interpreted by a shell process. They are extremely useful for automating tasks in Linux and other Unix operating systems. Unix-like operating systems and Windows. You can you can run shell like PowerShell. Excuse me. Um, a shell is a program that provides the traditional text-only in user interface for Unix-like operating systems. Its primary function is to read commands, i.e. instructions that are typed into a console, i.e. an all text display mode or terminal window, i.e. All, all text mode window. Okay, and then execute, i.e. run them. The default shell on Linux is the very commonly used and highly versatile bash. Um, I had a friend tell me that I wasn't quite speaking Spanish correctly, and he likened what I said to saying something like, I'm driving my skateboard. So he like he knew what I meant, but it sounded weird. Um, this is this reminds me of that like this whole this whole thing is like eh, okay i get what you mean um okay anyway uh all that is necessary to create your first script is to open a text editor but not a word processor oh yeah that's true such as nano or vim as an example type nano morning on the command line the nano text editor will open and type the following nano morning command line will open and then type the following three lines exactly as shown oh no this is actually wrong this should be a lowercase c uh bin bash clear echo good morning um i see uh they do want you to create a file called morning um are you able to share your screen or no i don't if you are sharing it already i don't see it Anyway, um, uh, if you can't, I suppose I can just, you can just tell me like what state you're at. Actually, we should probably start with that. You can tell me where, where in this document you're at. Uh-oh, it says your connection is disrupted. Is 
Is it lying to me? Can you hear me? Are you there? Oh no. Uh, maybe it's on my side. Let me try speed so test. I, uh, just, um, I had to like restart and put it to Google to oh. just allow the sharing screen. I see. Oh yeah, on macOS. Are you on macOS? Yeah. Yep. If you uh allow a program to do that, you have to restart it. Uh, it the permissions don't take effect until the next time it is restarted. Um, I'm sure there's a good technical reason for that. <laughs> um, otherwise they would not do that because uh, because of this very uh thing. Um, okay, so. Um, I'm not sure when you stopped being able to hear me. Ooh, that looked like it was about to share your screen, and then it didn't. Uh, I can still hear you, though, so it sounds like you're still connected. Uh, now I don't hear anything. All right, well, that's a bummer. Um... Maybe you can just tell me where you're at. I also, uh, we can move over to Jitsi. Um, I'm gonna open that up right now because I don't, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, we'll see if Jitsi mind. works. Oh, you, uh, hi! I heard you just now. Hello. I think I might have gotten it. Um, let me go back and check out. Check that out. Nope, it is. Showing me completely blank screen. So let me send you this. Maybe this will work. I've had better luck with that. Oh, wow. So I started sharing a smaller portion of the screen. And also, usually I'm on a black background, but I see now that on a white background, and with me expanded this much, there's a lot of speckles going on. Hopefully that's not too annoying. Oh, hey, I see your screen. Cool. You didn't have to join the, the, the Jitsi thing. Okay, cool. All right, so go ahead and tell me where you're at. Um, and yeah, tell me where you're at, uh, and we will go from there. Did you already, like, for example, did you already do this? The clear echo good morning? And did it tell you that clear command not found? I guess I'm just kind of confused on, like, where to start in general. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, um, yeah, I suppose this doesn't say anything about how do you open up a bash command window. And if you were to go look for that, actually, you would probably find some tutorial on how to how to find the bash command window. Um, does your school uh, offer you a login to like a central Linux system? Do you use um, SSH, maybe? Uh, I don't think no. so. Uh, the screen share just went away. Well, that's a bummer. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. Well, uh, oh, but you're on macOS. So you can, yeah, just there, type terminal. Um, T E yeah, that one terminal dot app. Hey, it looks like you already have opened it. Okay, then type um, nano morning. Um, that should all be on one line. So nano space morning. Um, yep, 
like that, and then hit enter. Now you're in the text editor. <laughs> you're actually in the text editor Pico, but that's fine. Um, Pico works like Nano. Um, in Unix, there's often more than one program that does basically the same thing. Um, and sometimes when you ask for one of those programs, it gives you the other one um, because you don't have the other program, the program that you actually want or that you asked for. Anyway, so in there, uh, type what they show, um, except for on the word clear, uh, you actually should be able to, on a Mac, just use the normal copy-paste um, start your copy on the on that line at the very beginning of the line including the hash and the bang or the exclamation point and then all the way to the yeah there hopefully those are not smart quotes anyway do command C to copy and then or right click and then do that um, and then right click wait you don't have right click uh, so you're doing control click maybe? Yeah. I see. Um, and then use the arrow keys to move the cursor to the word clear and put the cursor actually on the L. Uh, use the arrow keys, yeah. Uh, okay, and, and then um, hit enter, and then type C-L-E-A-R, but all lowercase. Um, no, uh, where it was, the only problem with it was that it was uppercase instead of lowercase. Yeah, so there. Yep. Um, and then, what do they say? Uh, oh, they do tell you how to save. Okay, so hold down control and tap O, then let go of O, then uh, keep holding down control and tap X. Um, oh, it's asking you name, file name to write. Hit enter for uh, to accept. It's asking you if you want to write to the file named morning. Um, down at the bottom in the black background white text. Yeah, there. So just hit enter. The, the cursor is already there. Now do control X. Hold down control and tap X. Cool. Um, and then let's see if they tell you how to run the script. Scripts are typically run by uh, by typing a dot, a forward slash, and the file name with no spaces between, and then pressing enter. However, the script will not run until you set permissions for the file. By default, permissions for new file are set to read and write only. To make your script executable, use the chmod with 755 option. This will make the script read, write, and executable for the user. Um, so type the following in your command line, chmod755 morning. So right there, yeah, type chmod space 755 space morning. Cool, and then hit enter. And then um, real quick, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you about a thing called tab complete. So type chmod space 755 space M O and then hit tab. So that was tab complete. Sometimes uh, you've typed enough that you can ask bash to just complete what you're in the middle of typing and it, it can guess based on what you've already typed what the rest should be. Um, so you can hit enter again uh, it doesn't hurt to chmod it again to the same settings. Now, now the script is ready to run. Uh, type the following command within the same directory and then press the enter key. That's weird. Um, but okay, yeah, do what they say. Type bash space morning. Um, 
and then hit enter. So there it cleared the terminal and then it printed good morning. Oh, I guess those are smart quotes. Um, the So they just told you to set the permissions so that you don't have to type, well, they didn't say this, but the reason you do that is so that you don't have to type bash and then the name of the program, morning, the file containing the, the code that you just wrote. Um, and then they had you type bash anyway. So they, they made it so that you don't have to type bash, and then they made you type bash. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure what, uh, what the deal was there. Um, but we can do the other thing they mentioned, which is type, uh, go back to the terminal, the, yeah, there, and type uh, dot slash M-O-R and then hit tab. Yep, and then hit enter, and it should do exactly the same thing. Yep, so it cleared, although it's kind of hard to tell, it cleared your screen, and then it printed good morning again in those smart quotes. Um, alrighty, uh, let's see what else they want. Um, the first of the three lines tells the operating system what shell to use to interpret the script and the location, i.e. absolute path name of the shell. Uh, so the three lines that they are talking about are the bin, uh, this right here, it, this uh, hashtag exclamation point. Um, has a few different names. Oh, uh, try, so make the window wider and then click on full video. Oh no, it cuts off the, this, okay, right at the word bash. That's, that's a bummer. Um, hmm. Well, I guess I can just do that. Hey, look, it's, it works now. And then on this side, all the way to the word type. Oh man. Oh well. Okay. Um, so they were just talking about these three lines. The very first line is which uh, interpreter should be used for the rest of these lines. So this is saying that we're gonna use the interpreter at this location, bin bash. Um, and then these are the commands that that bash is going to interpret. The first one is clear, then echo good morning. Um, but these quotation marks are actually not the normal quotation marks. Um, so uh, what it what I think what the intent of this is is to print out just good morning exclamation point and not also print out, the quotation marks. So, but these quotation marks aren't the normal, um, the the quotation marks that Bash expects. Um, they are, I'm guessing they're smart quotes. Um, so the left one looks like an open quote and the right one looks like a closed quote. Um, in, the, in the default ASCII keys, um, the there's just one quotation mark there's not two different quotation marks so these are anyway um let's let's go back to see i we don't have to cover that probably so i'm going to go back and see what else they say um the first of the three lines to tell the operating system what shell to use to interpret uh the script and the location of the shell um I'm just going to expand my window beyond what you can see so that I can see it because you have your own copy. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Interpret the uh, absolute path name of the shell. Um, the shell is bash, which is located in the bin directory, as are all shells. Um, not true. Thus, the line contains bin bash. Um, a pound sign, a pound sign, and an exclamation mark mark always precede this instruction, or in order to inform the system that it is perf it is providing the name and location of the shell or other scripting language. Um, so sometimes you'll see um, Python or uh, 
Ruby or some other scripting language. The second line tells the uh, shell to issue the clear command. So that means uh, if you have a bunch of st stuff, so if you go back to the terminal and you type like ls, just type ls and then hit enter a couple times. Um, and then now type clear and you'll see what clear does. That's it. It clears the entire screen, and then your, and then Bash prints the prompt at the very top of a completely cleared screen. Um, okay. So the second line, clear command. This is a very simple command that removes all the previous commands and output from the console or terminal window in which the command was issued. The third line tells the shell to write the phrase good morning on the screen. It uses the echo command, which instructs the shell to repeat whatever follows it. The, quot the quotation mar marks are not necessary in this case. However, it is good programming practice to use them. They can make a big difference in more advanced scripts. In slightly more technical terms, good morning is an argument, i.e. input data, uh, that is passed to the echo command. Um, as is the case with other commands used in shell scripts, clear and echo can be used independently of scripts. Thus, for example, typing clear on the screen, then pressing enter would remove all the previous commands and output would just leave a command prompt for entering the next command. Um, so we can also type echo. So if you go back to the terminal, um, type echo space quotation mark good morning exclamation point and then another quotation mark and then hit enter uh, one of those quotation marks isn't actually a quotation mark um, type quotation mark again and then hit enter just quotation mark, just quotation mark, yep, and then hit enter. Cool. Um, that's weird. Uh, when you typed quotation mark, um, did you do the same quotation mark both times? Just before and after good morning when you typed echo on that line? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, on my screen they look exactly the same. I'm not sure why, what the deal is there. Um, let's try it one more time. Type echo space quotation mark, so the double quote, both times. And then if that doesn't work, we'll, we can try a different quote. Um, so... Yeah, go ahead and hit enter. Let's see what happens with that. Okay, so that worked. Type echo quotation mark ASDF quotation mark. Double quote. Yeah. Interesting. Try echo ASDF exclamation point quotation mark. Maybe it's the exclamation point that is messing it up. Because um, you're using Z shell and not bash, so maybe that has something to do with it. No, 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 no. Uh, you need the quotation marks. Well, we're testing quotation marks, so um, so include them. Yeah, uh, another one at the end. Yeah, and then hit enter. Ah, it is the exclamation point. Okay. Um, now I'm curious. Does that matter for me? Echo, hi. Yeah, this must be a Z shell thing. Uh, just a second.
Um, no, it's not a Z shell thing. Okay, I don't know. Uh, but we can keep going. Um, I guess just keep in mind that if you put an exclamation point at the end of the line, that works differently for you than they expect. Um, I am getting a call. Hold on a second while I make that go away. Hi, this is Samuel. Oh, sorry about that, Daniel. Oh, no, no this is Gio with Tesla Recruiting. Wanted to follow up on your offer. Um, no worries, just call me whenever you're available, okay? Okay. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Daniel. Bye. Okay, I'm back. Um, uh, C, all the required pat. Oh, hello? Huh? Hi. Um, okay, so all the required packages for C and C++ compilers are already installed, installed in Ubuntu, assuming you ran sudo, uh, uh, Okay, so this looks like it assumes that you have installed Ubuntu. Did you do that? Do you have a virtual machine or something? Um, no. Uh, okay, well, let's go get one. Or do they have maybe another, an earlier assignment where they ask you to create a virtual machine? Does that sound familiar? Um, um, the first is I was they um made me like I guess install this install this studio code Visual Studio Code. I know that on Windows. Visual Studio Code can have a subsystem for Linux. Um, how to run a C program on Mac OS. Okay, so they just forgot to include instructions on how to do it in Mac OS for this assignment. Um, yeah, so in Mac OS, in the terminal, type clang. Oh, type uh, double quote. Nope, the hold down shift and yeah, and then hit enter. And then um, type clang, C-L-A-N-G, and then uh, space dash dash version, V-E-R-S-I-O-N. Yeah, and then hit enter. Okay, so it looks like you have uh, clang installed. Um, so we can follow along with Clang, um, anytime they say GCC, actually try typing GCC space dash dash version. Yeah, what does that do? Okay, cool. So, uh, if they say GCC somewhere, you can just type GCC. Um, <laughs> this is another case of that thing that I told you earlier. Um, where there's two different programs that do uh, almost the same thing, and um, for various reasons, people have different versions installed. Um, okay, so uh, go back to Nano, or uh, yeah, there, type N-A-N-O space F-I-R-S-T dot C. That's what they want you to do. Yep, and then hit enter. Um, so if they have a if they have something like this, there's an implied at the end. They always want you to hit enter. Um, then uh, add the following lines and do Control O to save and Control X to exit. So uh, you should probably just go copy these lines from the web page. 
the pound include STDIO, etc. Yeah. Wait, hold on. That's not the the same spot. Um, scroll to the the section that says see all the required. Scroll up a bit. Uh oh, I think you're on a different. Yeah, you're you're not on the same um document anymore. GCC 11, wow, that's a, an incredibly old version. Um, yeah, uh, what version or what lab or whatever is this? C programs from the bash command window. Hmm. Uh, which, do whatever document you sent me, First script and how to run C programs from the bash command window. Is this, is this like one of several different documents? Are you um, supposed to be reading the one for Mac OS specifically? Not sure. Okay, well, this is the one that you sent me. Uh, so scroll down to the first time you see code. Uh, C code. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. So pound include stdio all the way down to the close curly bracket after the word return. Yeah, so from pound include all the way down to that line yeah and then command c hopefully should copy it or do that um the right click menu thing or control click and then control click again for pasting that all looks good um now do control o to paste it Control O. Is that not? Oh, there you go. And then hit enter. And then control X. Okay. And then on the command line. Oh, <laughs> they don't even say GCC. Okay. So yeah, just do this. CC uh, dash C first dot C. And then hit enter. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So the smart quotes are screwing it up. Um, do nano space first dot C again. And put the cursor on the H. Uh, nano, what was the name? I think it was first dot C. F I R S T dot C. Yep. And then hit enter. And now put the cursor on on top of the H, so use the arrow keys. You should be able to use up and down, yeah, okay. And then hit uh, backspace, yeah, and then do quotation mark, and then put the cursor on the parenthesis, the close, and then do backspace, and then quotation mark. Uh, put a quotation mark there. Okay, now do control, uh, control O, enter. Control X. Okay. Uh, now hit up twice on the keyboard and hit enter. Oh, no, it still doesn't. Oh, that's weird. The uh, the first quotation mark. Okay, so do nano first dot C again. Um. Huh, I thought you had put a quotation mark there, but I guess not. 
Um, so yeah, put a quotation mark there. So the the issue was that the the type of quotation mark was wrong. Um, so hopefully now it is correct. Um, go ahead and exit, save and exit. Uh, so control O to save, enter, and then control X, and then up twice, and then enter. Hey, it worked. Okay, type LS, and you should see uh, first.c and a.out and possibly other files. Cool, there is a.out. Um, let's look at what it says. Oh, wait, no, you did dash C, so that should... So, uh, and it says that it created an object file, so first.o. It, you you just created first.o. Now create an executable by typing the following command. Um, so now type cc-o first space first.c. cc, yeah. And then hit enter. And then do, um, so it didn't complain, so it, it worked. Now type dot slash F-I-R-S-T, and you should be able to do tab complete, although it's pretty short, and then hit enter. Go ahead and hit enter. You don't have to type anything else. Yeah, so it comp you just wrote some C code, wrote slash copied some C code, and then you compiled it. I don't know why they had you compile it to object code first, but you made an executable out of it, which means you made the file instead of first.c, well, you used first.c to create eventually the file first with no extension at all, and then you ran that program. Um, and it did, uh, it printed out hello world. Um, is that what it said in the code? Yeah, it says hello world. Cool. Um, forgot your password. If you forgot your password for the Linux distribution, yeah, okay. So these instructions are specific to uh, not Mac OS. So it looks like we're done with this assignment. Uh, actually, that seems kind of, do they want you to like... I think he wants me, I think he's gonna like want me to screenshot my work, I guess. Uh, okay, cool. Um, it's funny that your teacher mentions that you should use nano and not, um, a word processor. And then the reason that your teacher says that is because of things like auto capitalization and, uh, quotation mark mangling. Um, and then it looks to me as though they wrote these instructions in a word processor and not uh, a text editor because they have those exact same problems. They have capitalization and quote mangling. Smart quotes. Um, uh, I think you want command shift four, and then you can select a region to, uh, screenshot. Yeah. So click in the upper left hand corner of what you want to screenshot and then, oh, click and drag, I think. So command shift four again. Oh, oh, that's cool. Well, that's even better. I don't know. What was that? Command shift five. Oh. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, w I wonder when they'll come out with a command shift six. Yeah. Command shift four allows you to select an area by clicking and dragging, I guess. I thought it was click in the upper left and then click again in the lower right. Or, you know, whatever opposite corners.
you might have to just make several screenshots. The um, terminal does have a scroll bar, but it doesn't always work like you might be used to in other applications. So, uh, is there something else that you want to work on after this? Or is this it? Uh, sure, let me check. Oh yeah, what version of uh, GCC or Clang did it say? It says... Uh, where? 14, yeah. The instructions that you have mentioned uh, 11, version 11, and I thought that was kind of old. Um, and yeah, it looks like it's kind of old. I'm guessing these instructions were written a while ago. Um, let's see. Uh, if there's a Mac version of the instructions, make sure you get that one. Yeah, okay. Linux script one requirements. Create a folder to hold your classwork. That's a good idea. Create a new file titled program one. So I create a folder for each class. And then in that folder, I create a folder for each assignment. Um, and you should do that too. Otherwise, you'll find yourself uh, being clobbering. Because I actually already see some evidence of clobbering. Um, the stuff that you, when you typed ls, there was already an a dot out. Um, which means you've already compiled something with the default settings and uh, you could easily have overwritten that with the stuff that we were just doing. Um, oh. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, uh, go ahead and create a, a folder for CS230, or at least that's my suggestion. <laughs> um, that's what I do. And yeah, I would name it CS230. And then in there, make a, another folder, or I would create a folder called whatever the name of the assignment is. So maybe program one. I'm not sure if this has a name. Program one might be the best name. <laughs> That's what it says up at the top. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, go ahead and uh, open that up, and that's that's where all of your program one stuff should go. Um, oh yeah, also um, I default to all lowercase, no spaces uh, for all names. Um, that's not required, but it does make it easier to type at the command line. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, so create a folder, create a new file titled program1. That's interesting. So they want you to create a file in that folder called program1. So on the terminal, uh, go back to the terminal, and um, I think you put the CS230 folder inside of documents. So go back to the terminal, and then we're going to go into documents and then in documents go into cs230 and then in cs230 go into the folder called um, program one um, and the way you do that is to uh, type cd as in change directory cd space 
documents and you can use tab complete so if you type capital D O C and then hit tab it'll probably complete you probably don't have anything else that starts with that okay and then type capital C and then hit tab and you that'll probably work and then type slash I guess you have something else that starts with CS 230 um, and then lowercase p and then hit tab program one and then hit enter so now you're in the folder program one in the folder CS 230 in documents um, now they they want you to create a file called program one um, they don't say exactly how so I guess you can use touch so type touch or maybe they want you to use nano they did tell you how to use nano um, but it doesn't actually matter either way so type touch how to create a first shell script okay so they do want you to create a text file so type touch um, because they also want you to um, chmod it so type touch space program one so that'll create a file if it doesn't already exist called program one and it doesn't already exist in this case so hit enter and then type ls and you'll see a file in the current directory hit enter named program one um, so now uh, scroll up on those instructions again um, on the uh, on the web page up uh, oh the instructions up above not not that yeah um, okay so create a folder to hold your classwork we did that create a new file called program one change the permissions on the file to add the execute bit for user group and owner uh, so oh I see what uh, yeah so they mean user group and other um, so at the command line type chmod space ugo they probably thought o meant owner but that's what the user is um, and then a plus symbol and then an x and then space p and then hit tab space p tab Yep, and then hit enter. So that changed the permissions on program one. Oh, we didn't look at what the permissions were, but if you type ls space dash l, you'll see what the permissions are, and you'll see that uh, dash l, not slash l. I don't think slash l will work. I know dash l will work. Um, and then hit enter. Um, so you can see there program one has x three different x's on at the very left most uh end of the line um do you see the x's that i'm talking about yeah so the first x is the user has execute permissions the second x is the group anybody in the same group as you uh which is staff um Anybody in that staff group can execute this program. And then the last X is other. Anybody on the whole machine, anybody else who uses your laptop, probably nobody, but um, if there were somebody else, then they would also have execute permissions on program one. Um, program one is currently empty, so that's not super interesting. Um, so let's look at the following instructions. Edit your new file using Vim VI Nano uh, to change it so it performs the following actions. Displays the date, displays the words hello world, display information about the users that are currently logged in. Remember to use bin bash as the first line of your script. Save the file and type your file name to execute it. Okay, let's go do that. So type nano and then what was it called? Program one, nano space program one, or nano space p tab, and then enter. And then type uh, crunch bang. Uh, crunch bang is the hashtag thing, shift and then three, and then exclamation point. So the hashtag thing, 
that's crunch, and then exclamation point is bang. So just like just like we did in that other program. Um, so exclamation point, not actually the word B-A-N-G, but the exclamation point. Yeah, and then do slash B-I-N slash B-A-S-H, like we did for the other program. B-A-S-H. It also says it on the web page. Yeah, and then hit enter. Um, I usually leave a blank line, so hit enter twice, and uh, a lot of a lot of people do. Hit enter twice. Yeah, and then uh, do you have a guess as to how to display the date? What command would display the date? Guess. Um, let me see. I guess. Um... So that looks like it's instructions on how to do what we did before, but using. Uh, a Ubuntu virtual machine or Ubuntu within Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, so the way to it, I'll give you a hint. It starts with D and it rhymes with date. Hmm. It starts with D, like date, and it rhymes with date, like date. And it's four letters long, like date. It's just date. Yep, and then hit enter. Um, so that will display date information, and then it wants you to echo the words, hello world. So how did we do that before? Echo, yeah. And because you're typing it into the terminal, you don't have to worry about the uh, quotation marks. They are, oh, I mean, you don't have to worry about them um, getting mangled, becoming smart quotes. Yeah. Okay, and then to get information about the users that are currently logged in, how might you do that? Um, I'm sure there's like a variable. It's not in that PDF. That document doesn't have it. Try searching um, the just like open up a new uh, new tab and then search on the internet. Um, display information about users that are currently logged in. Try searching that literal exact phrase. You could copy it from the instructions. Yeah. Cool. And then hit enter. Oh, no, not C. This is bash. Oh, that's a different answer than I was expecting. Cool. Uh, 
but it it's actually a better answer than what I was thinking of. So I'm glad we searched. <laughs> so you would, yeah, type who on a line by itself. And then what is the next thing that they wanted you to do? There was at least one more thing. Oh, no. Remember to include that at the top of your script. Oh, I see. We did that already. Okay. Um, save the file. Oh, actually, hit enter one more time after who. Yeah. And then save the file. And control. Uh, control O, I think. Look at the very bottom of the terminal window. You see where it says uh, caret O, and then it says oh. write out. Yeah, that means it will write the contents that you have that you're looking at out to the hard drive. Oh, so that means it's going to be saved. Mm -hmm. The uh, wording. I guess is uh, very antiquated. Yeah, it's a uh, it's when people were it's it's for a time when people who uh, were using machines were much closer to the hardware. So like they they knew. At that time, they everybody who used a machine knew a lot more about like what's actually involved when you save a file, like what hard drive, uh, what hardware actually makes what movements and stuff. Um, but we don't have to care about that. Um, you uh, accept that the terminology is that's that's why the terminology is what it is there. Anyway, do do what it says. Uh, so the caret is control, and then the O is just O. Uh, and now it's asking you, do you want to save it with the name program one? Excuse me. Uh, two files. Uh, you you probably just want to save it to the name program one. So if you just hit enter like you've been doing, it'll it'll save it to the default spot. Um, cool. It'll save it with the name that it started with. Um, I don't, I thought I, re, I thought Nano had a way of just saving and exiting all at once, but maybe not. Um, okay, so now you have saved the file. Now you should exit the file. I'm kind of curious if they use Pico because it is not the same license as Nano. Um, anyway, so now that you've done that, uh, you should be able to execute the program because we already gave execute permissions to your user. So to execute the program named program one, you can do like you did for the program named morning. You can either type bash and then the name of the program, or since you've granted it um, execute permissions, you can type dot slash and then the name of the program. So in this case, the name of the program is not morning, it is program one. Also, you should be able to do tab complete. Um, go ahead and hit enter. Let's make sure that there's... Okay, cool. Um, now do dot slash p tab. And let's see if tab complete... Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. And then hit enter. Um, or not, as the case may be. Okay, so it's showing you the date, Thursday, September 14th. Um, and it's showing you the Hello World, and it's showing you the users that are currently logged in. Um, and technically, you, your user is logged in twice. 
one of the times that you are logged in is the graphical interface that you see. I think that one is TTYS000. No, that doesn't make sense. I guess it's console. And then the other one, TTYS000, that's the terminal window that you see. So this, this window here that has all the text in it that you've been using nano in and stuff is the term the second login that you have so if you open up another terminal and type who you should see three of your user try that um, do command n to open up another terminal window n for new and then type who Uh, who? W-H-O. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you see three different of your user. Console is the graphical user interface one, and then each of the TTYs is one of the terminal windows. TTY is short for teletype. I'm not sure what the S is. Anyway, um, you can close that window, yeah. Um... Okay, is that uh, the end of that dis assignment, or? Yeah, I guess you could screenshot it. Um, Hmm. for Why is it to create a program? Um, okay, so in the same folder, create a program 1B. Cool. So how did you create program 1? What did you do to go from not having program one to having program one? Just a file with that name. I think I Nope, we d we don't want to create a new folder. Also that's uh not how you did it. Uh but if you want to create a file that way, if, if that's a way that you'll be able to do it in the future, you can create the file that way. In that same menu that you just created, uh, the folder, or you started to create a folder, 
you can use that same menu to create a file if you want but that that isn't what we did but if you want to you could do it that way computer doesn't care computer will create the file the same file either way um, so what we did before is we used touch we said touch program one yeah, was and that was how to make the file program one exist now we want to make the file program one B exist yeah Cool. So now the file program 1b exists, and then it says change the permissions so that you have the execute bit for user group, and it probably says owner, but um, so how did you change the permissions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to change the permissions on, yep, program 1b. Um, and then, um, can you move the, or shrink the terminal window so it's a little bit shorter so I can see the, what the web page says? Okay, so, edit the new file using Vim, VI, Nano, or Emacs. Um, so, go ahead and type Nano. Yeah. And you should be able to do almost tab complete because you have a program one and a program one B. If you use tab complete, it will complete whatever is common between them. And then it'll be up to you to, to differentiate by you. You would have to type B if you did tab complete there anyway. Um, so nano program 1b and then hit enter to start the program nano with the file and remember to use uh, use the yeah crunch bang bin bash then it says, uh, using a line after crunch bang bin bash, take the output of ps-e and pipe it to the sort command. So what that means is literally type, so go to a, a new line, hit enter a few times, couple, two, and then type ps space dash e, then um, you don't have to, but it's easier to read if you put space and then the pipe character. So that is just under the backspace. You have to hold down shift and that key. It's also the slash. Yeah. And then space, um, and then they wanted you to pipe it to the sort command. So you are taking the output of ps-e and piping it to, and then they want you to put it into the sort command. So you can literally just type sort. Yeah. And then what do they want you to do? After it has uh, been piped, redirect that output to a, po a file called ps file. So to redirect output, you need to be on the same at the end of that same line so put the cursor back at the end and then do you know how to redirect output standard output um. uh no that would be cool though um you can't just type redirect and then something you at least not with bash maybe there's some other shell that can do that um, but uh, you want to type the greater than yeah and then space and then whatever file they wanted you to put it into ps file yeah and then 
Um, no, remember to include bin bash as the first line. Okay. Um, hit enter to make sure there's at least one line after that. And then uh, please upload your source code and sample output. Okay, I guess you can save. Yep. And then exit. And then run the program. That's close. Yeah. You have to add at the very front something. You can't just type program 1B. When you did program 1, what did you type at the beginning? Yeah, dot slash. Cool. So now you can see the output by looking into the file ps file. You can do that by typing cat space ps file. Like where you are right there, type cat space ps file. Cat is short for concatenate. Um, and it's, I, I don't know why that means print out the content of the file. Um, it's concatenated is used for a lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, so yeah, type cat like you, like you had space and then the name of the file that you want to print. Uh, nope. The, the file that you want to print is where the output was redirected to. Where did the output get redirected to? Yeah, PS file. Okay, hit enter. That is the content of PS file. That okay. is a lot of content. Um, you can, in Finder, you can open up this file using... Just like double click on it, PS file, uh, PS file, and then yeah, it's a text file, so you, you should be able to scroll up and down. Um, don't save, just scroll up and down and then exit. And if it asks you to save, say no that you don't want to. Cool. Um, that's a lot of processes running. Um, all right, uh, please upload your source code and sample output. So they want you to upload program 1B and PS file for this assignment. Oh, this is a separate assignment, Linux script 2. Is this the same assignment? No, it's, it's all the same assignment. Okay, cool. Oh, it says start assignment in the upper right. That's weird. Okay, well, uh, I think we've done all of the stuff for that. And you know how to find PS file and program 1B in Finder. So uh, do you think you can handle uploading it? Do you know like how to do that? I think so, yeah. Um, not by screenshotting it. So they're going to want you to upload the file PS file. So you just created the file PS file and you just opened it. Yeah. No, so they, they're they probably going to have you upload that file. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. I guess I don't know for sure, but um, that sure seems like a way easier way. If I were running this class, I would want that and not a bunch of screenshots. 
Um, especially for this part where yeah. there's like so much text. Yeah. I think he said though, like something about like, said like, I guess screenshots aren't okay, but he has said like in later assignments, you can start doing like, these, yeah, um, putting them in zip files and stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the the first couple things we did where we ran stuff in the terminal, it uh, makes sense to screenshot that. Um, but now we are outputting stuff to files, and that seems to me like why would you do that except for then you can upload the file that you just made. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so my guess is that what they mean by later assignments is, like, starting with this Linux script to, uh, upload the, the file, PS file that you just made. Cool. Um, is there another thing that you wanted to work on no i think that pretty much covers it nailed it yeah. oh i'm <laughs> i'm <laughs> I, I just looked over at the clock um that that's pretty good timing <laughs> yeah yeah thanks so much for now yeah you're welcome um yeah thanks. i'll see you next time oh wait actually hold on a sec let me double check something um uh, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Um, oh, wow. It has been a while since you and I have met, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being a student for so long. Oh, yeah. maybe it's been so long. Um, so I started recording my screen. I don't know if I told you that, um, and then I upload the the screen recording to YouTube, and and I uh, if you're okay with it, I would do it public. But if you don't want that, I can do it private or unlisted, and then send you a link. Um, or if you don't want me to do that either, I, I won't do that. Um, I don't really mind. I, you don't mind. Uh, so it's a, oh, is it okay if I do it? Actually, usually I write this down. Let me go look and see if I asked you this before. So you're okay with this being public? Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, awesome. When was the last time that we met? Okay, so it looks like 2022 December. Well, yeah. thanks for being such a long time student. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, I was trying to look up whether or not you had given me five stars before. Um, thanks for, <laughs> for being a long time student. And in case uh, you were wondering, I don't know if I've told you either, um, the, the five stars actually does help, um, if you want to do that, that would be awesome. If not, then that's okay too. Um, and yeah. All right. Um, any, do you have any other comments or questions for me or you no. good? You're good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, actually, um, have you seen this thing before? Like. The screen share with my my head in the, the corner. Have I done that with I you know. yet? Thank you. I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. You and I. Like I'm I'm sure you've seen people on YouTube do this, but. I guess so. Oh okay, cool. Um, all right. Well, yeah. That's that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah, bye.